Welcome back. It is the Flow Friday Sports Show on Flow FM. Cricket, Albury, Wodonga, the Hume branch to be exact is where we're heading next. Steve Bennett is on the line with me to give us the weekend's results from a very, very tight round of cricket. How are you, Steve? Great to have you back. Yeah, good to be here. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, very well. Very well, thanks. Very good. Let's start off with Osborne and Henty in the first grade. And Osborne uh, elected to bat first, made 205 in their 40 overs. And Henty, 8 for 176 from their 40. So a pretty good chase from Henty, but fell uh, about 30 runs short in the end. Yeah, uh, Osborne had a couple of troops back and playing at home. We had um, the Perryman brothers back, uh, two of them. And uh, they... uh, Looks like they had a reasonable partnership. Um, Joe, the youngest of the Perrimans, making 50, and Ed, who's the captain, making 44. So 205 at Osborne's a pretty good score. Uh, probably just over par. And uh, Henty's captain, um, Daniel Turlick, taking three wickets. Uh, and in reply, yeah, like you said, they just fell a little bit short. But uh, Daniel ran dead a very good game, making 55. And um, Billy Glanville and... Um, taking three for 31 with the best for best for Osborne. All right. It was a bit of a Turlick show for Henty with mm. Captain Daniel Turlick making the runs and taking the wickets. Shannon Turlick going all right with the bat as well. And Cameron Turlick taking a couple of wickets. So a bit of a family affair there, but a good win for Osborne in the end. Let's move on to Brock Burham smashing 318 runs. Uh, taking the bat first, and absolutely no surprise that they came away pretty comfortable winners in the end. The Rocky on Creek all out for 168 in reply. Yeah, well, it's certainly um, uh, playing as we do on um, uh, synthetic wickets. Uh, you wouldn't think a toss is always good to win, but Brock Barham uh, made the best of winning the toss on Sunday, that's for sure. 318, biggest score by anyone for the year, I think, in both um, in both grades for CA, um, CAW Hume. Uh, Harrison Weaven making 109, Mitchell Kuzitsky 54, and uh, that man, Darcy I. Anson, just uh, made 69, and I can imagine, having seen him bat, they wouldn't have taken long to accumulate. Jack Driscoll taking four for 41 for the home side, 318. You know, that's eight and over. That's a lot to chase. So uh, looks like the Rock got off to a really bright um, bright start. Mark Alcorn, 54, and Jack Driscoll, 38, but um, faded faded and um, yeah ended up just a bit short there well chasing 319 for victory you're really on the back foot straight away you've got to get out and start scoring in a hurry which obviously leads to some wickets uh, potentially falling a bit faster so Brock Burham really put that match away uh, with the bat from the get-go so well done to Brock Burham very good win there and yeah it'll be interesting to see if anyone can top that score for the entire season so we will watch with bated breath Let's go to Colcan and Waller, and this one was a pretty comfortable win for Waller. Colcan all out for 102 with the bat, and Waller managed to chase that down in just 22 overs, losing just the four wickets along the way. So pretty easy one for Waller. Yeah, Waller continue on their merry way, don't they? They've been playing very well uh, this year uh, in the early rounds. Um, Colcan, yeah, Steve Brand made 49. Um, without him, it might have been a much sadder tale. Uh, Mitch Laritzen taking four wickets and Mark, uh, Mark Taylor taking three for the visitors. And yeah, when you're chasing 102, um, you can pace your innings and uh, Waller uh, ran that down in no time. But uh, see Mark Taylor also backed up with a bat there with um, an even 50. So yeah, Waller, uh, Waller uh, continuing to set the pace in, in um so it's great. Well done to Walla on that win. Last game of the round, and we've saved the best for last. Holbrook batted first and made 174 from their overs against Rand. In reply, Rand dangerously close to stealing the win. Eight for 169 from their 40 overs. So they fell just five runs short in the end. This one looked like it was a cracker, and I would have to think Holbrook's bowlers in those last couple of overs were a little bit nervous with the bowl, but ultimately did enough to keep Rand under their target score. Yeah, it would have been a very nerve-wracking in those last few overs, I'd imagine, Dan. Uh, but, yeah, good on Holbrook. They've broken through for their first win for the year, which is terrific, uh, making 174. And um, Rand, yeah, they were they were chasing uh, chasing hard. Mark Kreutzberger making 66. He's always... Um, 
always in the runs. And, uh, yeah, the uh, Holbrook bowlers is pretty even spread across. Cook and Huck are taking a couple of wickets each. But, uh, yeah, Holbrook would be very pleased to bank their first wins of the year and, uh, you know, face next week with some renewed optimism. All right, good win for Holbrook. They're on the board. And now everyone is on the board. Walla Walla still undefeated at 6-0. and oh. Osborne right behind them at 5-1. and one. Brock Burham 4-2. and two. Henty 3-3. Three and three. The Rock and Cole Can 2-4. and four. Rand and Holbrook 1-5. and five. So uh, a little bit of separation in the top half of the ladder. A game separating each of the top four one at a time. And then uh, two and one wins on each of the bottom four sides. So a bit of separation growing there. Let's have a look at the second grade matches from the weekend. And Osman, a very comfortable win. Henty, 5 for 120 from their 35 overs. And Osman sort of just cruised to that score in 25 overs. 1 for 121. So uh, Isaac Gooden and your son, Henry Bennett, pretty comfortable at the crease, I would have thought. Yeah, oh, they certainly, they face some very good bowling. But uh, sometimes, um, you, you know, it's your day and... Uh, yeah, the the, the uh, team batted very well. It was a good opening partnership with um, Isaac Gooden and Will Howard and uh, Henry's a bit of a bashing up merchant. Came in at the end and probably finished the game a little bit earlier. But, uh, yeah, Henty were down on troops. And um, I guess um, you've got to play what's in front of you and uh, the team will be pleased to bank that win. And in the other game that was played, there were a couple of uh, buys over the weekend. But the other game that was played... Brock Burham all out for uh, 145 from 30 overs. And Lockhart all out chasing that score. They only fell 15 runs short, but not often you see both teams going all out. And the Brock Burham bowlers did very, very well to get Lockhart all out 15 runs short of their target. Well, that's right. And that's uh, Lockhart's first um, first loss uh, since coming back from the A grade on, on the field. They uh, uh, weren't able to put a team together a couple of weeks ago and... Um, with Harvest, but uh, yeah, that's their first um, uh, actual playing loss this year. And uh, Brock Barham will take a lot of heart from it. They're they're a team that um, uh, have a pretty uh, regular core playing every week. So uh, yeah, um, good on them. Uh, I think um, the team I play for has got to play them in a couple of weeks. So hopefully they're over that winning form by then. So Cole Can on top in the second grade at five and one. Lockhart, Osborne and Henty, four wins each right behind them. So things heating up in both grades. Let's have a look ahead to this weekend's action in the first. Brock Burham taking on Rand at Brock Burham. This one should be a good game. Yeah, I think we've seen uh, Brock Burham really uh, flex their muscles in the last few weeks. But um, in saying that, Rand uh, Rand have shown a lot of, lot of good form in some close losses. So, yeah, I think you'd have a highly competitive game. Um, against these two teams, both out of the old Brocklesby League. So uh, they would have had a lot of battles over the years. So, yeah, no, I, I think um, regardless of where the, each of them are on the ladder, they always have a very good game against each other. Waller taking on Holbrook at Waller. And this one might be a little bit one-sided. Holbrook might have to pull a rabbit out of the hat uh, to try and steal a win in this one. Waller going along very nicely, especially on their home deck. Yeah, well, it's 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 the old first versus last, but... Um, uh, both of them coming off a win, so um, yeah, hopefully um, Holbrook can find um, find a bit in the tank to uh, push push the uh, Waller team. Um, but uh, yeah, it's hard to see um, Waller dropping one at home. But well, Holbrook might be just a team that um, can spring a surprise. You just never know. Stranger things have happened. And in our other two games, Henty taking on Colcan at Henty and the Rocky Ron Creek taking on Osborne, uh, the Rocky Wrong hosting that one. So I think these two will probably be the two matches of the round, not too much ladder separation uh, between all four of those teams, but those matchups individually should both be pretty good ones. Yeah, I think I think you're absolutely right, Dan. They'll both be really good. They, they're um, Henty and Cole Can are very um, traditional rivals, only living um, 10 minutes apart. And uh, so they always have a great game. And the Rock and Osborne have built up a pretty strong rivalry over the last few years. Um, through shared communities and things like that. So uh, whenever they play, it's always um, always a, a pretty tense struggle. So, yeah, I think um, looking forward to the round ahead, I think we've potentially got a couple of really close games and um, who knows what happens in the other ones. And in the seconds, we'll be hoping we can get four out of four games this week. We know it's hard this time of year with Harvest and 
Uh, a lot of people having higher priorities than their weekend sport, but nevertheless, Oakland's taking on Brock Burham, Holbrook taking on Waller, Cole Can facing off against Henty, and Osborne hosting Lockhart. So four good matchups to come there, and hopefully we get four games on the park. Steve, the big question, as it is every week, have you got the call up yet? Are the pads ready to go? Um, well, I'm now of an age that I have to use my children's gear. <laughs> So, <laughs> so that gear will be uh, available, I'm sure. Um, but uh, hopefully uh, they'll, they'll use them and I'll be able to watch. Deary me, the hand-me-downs from the children. Dangerous territory, Steve. But nevertheless, good luck to you this weekend. Hopefully you are out there smashing a few runs and taking a few wickets or a few catches at the least if you don't get an over with the bowl. But should be a good weekend of cricket nevertheless. Good luck to everyone involved. Steve, always a pleasure to chat to you. Looking forward to doing it again next week. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for the interest. And, um, yeah, catch, catch up with you next week.